The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what's happening today? Well, uh, we got a little bit of push. Still uh, is not enough to push the S&P into the black. Uh, down five on the S&P. Dow's just up 28. Uh, NASDAQ still down 10. Russell's off five. And uh, Russell is the weakest sister of the bunch. Um, came down, had some decent volume in the first hour. Um, started pushing the market higher. Uh, ended up not having really much of anything, about uh, 3.2 billion shares as we start the day today, uh, or start the show. So a fairly weak volume day. So it depends on uh, if you're bullish or bearish, you'd say it's uh, weak volume up or weak volume down. Um, of course, as we go into this week uh, with political turmoil, the first thing that you would notice uh, would be just the uh, absolute huge down day uh, that, uh, hang on a second here, down day that um, China had. Uh, Shanghai ended up down 1.8 percent. Uh, the Nikkei was down a quarter of a percent. Um, HSI was down 2.6 percent. So we've got a lot of weakness in Asia. Uh, Japan, not so bad, down a quarter percent. But the markets, uh, like Friday, yeah, they jammed them up in the last couple of minutes. Uh, today, are they going to do the same thing? Hard to tell. Uh, but certainly, there aren't a lot of people diving to get in uh, into the market in the last part of at least the couple last couple hours. Um, and it kind of looks like yesterday, which is you get a little bit of buy-in at the end of the day. A, it's a ghost town uh, other than uh, the machines selling to the machines. Uh, very little else going on. Of course, the biggest thing is that uh, whole uh, market with uh, 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 Asia, but it, not, not something that you couldn't have kind of foretold. Uh, let's go ahead and look at these. Um, Trying to remember which one it was now. I will remember here in a second. Well, it's easier just to go and find it. Hang on just a second. Okay. Let's just do that. Okay. A D R E. That's the. Emerging markets, it's one of them. There was another one I had out here. Eh, you always know that you're going to forget something by the end of the day. And I did. Let's go over here to October. And that update there. Because I know it was in there. There it is. Uh, the Asia 50 ETF. So that is the... Uh, AIA for the symbol on this, but um, we talked the last few days, really since last Wednesday, of just a multitude of Gartley patterns. The AIA had a three-gap play in the last run uh, back from this $57.80. So let's go back and pull that up in the actual charts. IAI. Uh, I, I. Anyway, uh, you had a wonderful three-gap play on the way up. Uh, the last one gapped over almost exactly the exact um, uh, gap up right around the $63 range. Uh, 
Uh, you had a gap down on Friday, the second gap down here. And generally the thought is that in a three gap play, uh, as soon as you start filling one of those gaps, then the next two are open. So this also suggests that Asia should have or could have a significant weakness back down to about 59.50. On, uh, <clears throat> uh, on just the completion of a three-gap play. But, of course, this was also a completion of a fairly large Gartley pattern uh, in the market. And uh, third-world Latin American countries, uh, uh, Asia, uh, they've all had kind of similar big, huge, uh, ex uh, extended bearish butterflies. And of course, now this one comes back in underneath the um, July 1st uh, X point. Uh, and again, that's uh, $62.50. So a close below $62.50 would be quite significant. We're at 62.53 right now. I don't know if that's going to significantly change. We see a little bit more um, than you would want to see those um, three gaps actually come back and filled. Uh, so again, uh, you got a big gap out here, which I, you know, we pretty much jumped right over the first one. Um, my guess is then we'll get into the second one where you'll find some minimal support and then you'll be back down to 59.50 or so in this AIA. But um, there are a great deal of these Gartley patterns in the market. In fact, we'll go through a bunch of them today. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always leave a message in the den. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, history is repeating. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1918, at the 11th hour on the 11th day, of the 11th month of 1918, the Great War ends, World War I. Of course, they didn't know to call it World War I because that was supposed to be in the end of all of these. At 5 a.m. that morning, Germany, bereft of manpower, supplies faced with imminent invasion, signed an armistice agreement with the Allies in a railroad car outside Compiègne. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Compiègne, France. The world's first uh, world war left 9 million soldiers dead, 21 million wounded, with Germany, Russia, uh, Austria, Hungary, France, and Great Britain, uh, Britain each losing a million or more lives. In addition, at least 5 million civilians died from disease, starvation, and exposure. A great deal of this was because uh, they had a lot of doddering old fools that were like 80 years old running the war. And these guys went back to the late 18, well, 1870s, 1880s, our Civil War, on the way war was supposed to be uh, uh, actually uh, uh, waged. And, of course, uh, by this time, uh, industry had, uh, you know, movable guns, machine guns, uh, just a horrific amount of uh, Weapons of uh, soon-to-be mass destruction, um, from mustard gas to um, chlorine. A oh, whole bunch of horrible things. Anyway, uh, the memorial for all these folks is in downtown Kansas City. If you ever go downtown uh, by the train station, you'll look up and see it. It's there because of the second World War president, Truman. Who uh, got it built uh, right after that? We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're going to go to Max in Houston. How are you doing today, Max? I'm doing just fine, uh, David. I have a question on UVXY, maybe more like in the mechanics of it. It mm -hmm. appears to me that they uh, buy the futures on a daily basis, but like today, I see it being, you know, from my perspective, being kind of disjoint from the VIX itself. Am I seeing it wrong, or? Um, well, there's a, there's a couple of things going on. First of all, have you ever read the white paper from the CBOE on it? No, I have not. Okay. Absolute that's, that's first one of the things. thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> huh? That's one of the things that I should have, uh, that should do. But well, um, if you need a link, you can email me or anybody else okay. at path at tfnn.com, and I'll be glad to give you a link. That's it's fine. free. It's not painful. It is uh, a lot of squiggly kind of lines that look like a Z turned sideways. Um, there's a lot of math that undergoes uh, under uh, lies what this actually is. Uh, the UVXY yeah. is an ETF that supposedly tracks uh, the VIX. Um, it will basically decay in an entire year. Um, yeah. if, the, if the VIX just went um, sideways, it would be worth nothing a year after you bought it, um, yeah. no matter where they started off at. So, the idea, though, is uh, probably one of the fallacies that a lot of people don't understand. The, the UVXY is based on the VIX, um, but it's based on the futures for the VIX. So you've okay. got kind of a second order kind of thing going on. But let's get to the VIX okay. first, because if you don't understand the VIX, you don't understand the UVXY. The, the VIX is a rolling average of a 24 and 36 day average, kind of an oscillator okay. of, of the out of the money puts and calls in the S&P 500. 
So if there's any option that literally is worth anything other than the, uh, the premium, then it doesn't go into it. So what this is, what the VIX actually measures is how many people think that there's a chance or that they're buying a chance uh, that there's going to be a big move in the future, right? So okay. the idea is you want to buy it uh, when the uh, when no one thinks anything's going on, and you kind of want to sell it when everybody thinks that the market could only go lower. So it's kind of a reverse, reverse thing. Now, you're going to be wrong a lot more than you probably will be in any other yep. stock. I understand. So what you have to do is figure out when you're going to be in it, uh, because uh, this is uh, one of the things uh, that can move 10 bucks at any price that it's at yep. at any day, right? So you can move, well, yep. it, it would be a, a handful of days, uh, but it wouldn't be beyond the scope of reason to see it's what, uh, $17 and 60 cents wouldn't be beyond the scope of reason to think the thing could be 25 bucks on Friday because it's done that kind of stuff before. Uh, yeah, and, I understand. uh, the lower the VIX goes, the bigger, the boom's going to be on the other side. If you can get any kind of trend more than a couple of days down. So, yeah. uh, the idea is that you have to know that you can be as long as let's say that you lost a buck on it each time you trade it. You can probably be wrong ten times, be right the the eleventh uh, time and break even. Yeah, and that's, I understand that. I, I, I was just thinking there would be probably a close connection between both of them because like the VIX is up like five percent or above that today. So right. I was expecting. But, but I'm gonna you know, I'm the, gonna go back and say it slowly. No, no, I understand what you, what, what you told me before. No, the, the I, think, I, I, think maybe you, I think maybe you missed it. The VIX is based on the price of out-of-the-money puts and calls. Yes, that's what I... Right. Okay. Those are options. The UVXY yeah. is on the futures for those Ooh, options. Okay. Okay, no, right? I, I, I get it now. That's okay, my disconnect. Okay, you got... There's a second-order kind of yeah. uh, event that cascades down to it. So a, at this point, you can not have a lot, but you can have the decay in the futures. And of yeah. course, the both the VIX and the UV, uh, UVXY are all about the momentum in the market. Um, okay. You win if you get a sudden down move. You win if the, there's a, a, a uh, trend lower. Yeah. You lose if the market okay. goes sideways or it goes higher. Right? So two out of the three you lose. Uh, the yeah. third time you make a mint. <laughs> so you have to understand that, that this is swinging for the fences. And yeah. as long as you understand that you can't put uh, a absolute ton of money into it, it's fine. Uh, options are a way uh, to actually have limited downside in this, but virtually unlimited upside. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the money management, I got, I got it. Well, I was just, um, I, I was missing that, you know, the second order, you know, part. It is. It, this is the futures. Is, um, this is, that's how I'm they sorry, get this ahead. thing to move a great deal more than the VIX, right? Yes. It's based on the future. Yeah. So you're, you're, this is kind of like an atomic bomb that sets off a yeah. nuclear fission bomb. Right, you got to have the atomic yeah. bomb to, to to give you the yield of the nuclear bomb, which is a thousand times yeah. more powerful than the atomic bomb. So you you are a kind of a second order kind of thing here, and the idea yeah. is just to make sure and keep your losses to a minimum. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you a lot of times, if you can be successful one out of five times in this thing, you can actually be. Um, very profitable on it. Everybody thinks that you know you ought to have a, a good RB, a, a good batting average. This is one of the ones where, as long as you can keep your losses low, uh, and generally the nice thing about when the VIX is low is that these things and the options are going to be low. So the yep. 
to me, that's the way you can do it. If you get into a trend, you can probably chase it with the equity. But uh, this is one that actually is a very good candidate for actually playing the uh, options because, again, at any one point, this thing can go and and go up 50 or 100%. I understand. So, so you just have to, just have to do that. And, of course, you know, when you get sideways markets that are very light, the options will contract fairly quickly. Uh, but <clears throat> if you get any kind of surprise in the market, that's when a lot of things start to change. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. It's a great explanation. And, and just remember. I'm going to listen to it a couple more times just to make sure I didn't miss anything. But I do appreciate your time and your and, knowledge. And do remember, this is a rolling average of a 24 and 36-day moving average between the two of, uh, of the last summit date. So you're going to have some permutations and some times where you can actually buy them very cheap and times where you can buy them extremely expensive. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, Boeing, one of the bigger movers out here today, and we wanted to talk about this just because, uh, as I said before, um, if everybody's thinking about shorting a stock, probably not a good idea. Secondly, everybody's short it, so any kind of good news generally has a fairly big uh, tail on it. 
of course, you were down under 350 earlier in the day and uh, just under 370 on the day. Um, they announced that they will uh, start renewing deliveries, uh, but uh, the airline companies themselves are saying uh, that they're not going to be betting on any, uh, that they're back uh, actually flying um, probably until February or March. That being said, generally what you want to do on a stock like this is not short it why it's in the news, but you want to short it after all the good news is in and the people back up at the highs uh, finally have run all the shorts out. That's generally when the folks that are in this knee deep are going to probably start selling it and you're going to find the weakness. Uh, unless forced to, Wall Street is not going to sell a stock at a loss or sell it in a panic. Uh, they will go and send their minions out to improve uh, the uh, PR on a stock, tell everybody how great it is, get it back up, let everybody forget, and then they'll start selling it. Uh, unless there's some kind of fatal flaw with the company that's going to run it bankrupt, um, they are not big uh, believers in run like hell uh, when the enemy starts shooting. Uh, so as you look at this, there's one other thing that uh, I suspect that I would want to see uh, before you would short it uh, as the question comes in, and that would be the CEO getting fired. Uh, on that, you know, you'll be able to wash a great deal um, of the uh, sins out of their hair. Uh, you're going to wash that man right out of my hair. Anyway, uh, certainly we would see that. So we don't have a lot of destruction yet in price today. Still never really went positive in the S&P. Uh, just went barely positive in the Dow on this news. But again, I don't know if it's really news. Uh, to me, it is all about when the planes start flying again and making money for the people that bought them. Uh, until that time, the meter is running uh, on uh, that for Boeing. And again, like I said, they're going to pump this back up. They'll sell into uh, the highs again. And at that point, then you're going to probably see the weakness. Uh, today, uh, we're back into the candle of the 18th of October. That had 13.5 million shares. Uh, we're up on about 8.8 uh, .8 million shares so far. But again, everybody piling on a stock probably means one thing. And that is that until the shorts are squeezed out, you don't want to be in it. Uh, to, to, to another kind of stock with that kind of idea is Tesla. And this is right back to where we shorted it um, back uh, at the beginning of the year in the Tech Insider. I thought it would probably go down forever. I think we got uh, started shorting it around, I think my first our best short was like 348, something like that. Maybe it was 350. I can't remember now. Uh, started selling it, I think, at two, or covering our short at 240. I think I ended up covering all the way down to 220. Um, it had one more leg down to 176.99. And then, of course, this is the way that these highly uh, leveraged stocks uh, to reality actually trade. Um, you do have to like it up here, and that is that there was a, there's a nice, sweet hanging uh, doji out here tomorrow. If you saw that thing kind of close a little lower, um, you'd want to keep a close eye on uh, the actual short interest on Tesla. When everybody, and that's why I went, I pulled the trigger back here at uh, 345 or started. I think we shorted all the way down to about 290 in the newsletter. I think we added a third and a third and a third. Uh, but what you want to watch is uh, that everybody gives up shorting the thing. And when the people are tired of shorting and giving away all the cash, that's generally when these things rotate back down. If you just look at the last four or five days, uh, you had one kind of day with a little bit of volume. Uh, you squo uh, squeezed a lot of people out on earnings. It's back up to its highs. They've got the story with that everybody in China is going to buy one, probably untrue. Uh, and the question of whether or not they're going to be able to keep those kind of margins. 
Uh, I would say the chances is less than one in 100. Uh, the margins will come down from what they claim uh, dubiously as around 20 to 25 percent margins when an entire industry that has scale can't get 8 percent. So eventually, uh, this thing will all rotate back over. Uh, they'll be back down to their 8 percent margins. Uh, a lot of other manufacturers are going to have cars this year. If they, the worst thing for Tesla would be is if they can't sell them. Because guess what? At the end of the model year, those things will be discounted even more and put a bite into Tesla, at least here in the United States. A little problematic or more problematic in China. But my guess is that every company that's gone to China has had to leave with its tail between its legs. Tesla will, won't be any different. It's all about the timing that you get in this. But uh, when you look at the uh, price up there and the volume, Say, okay, that's kind of interesting. Came down on 24.1 million shares back on the 18th of January. And you're back up into uh, these levels with 14, 15, 6, maybe, and now 6 million shares. So um, what you want to see is exactly what you saw back up into this high. And that is kind of like interday spikes that go nowhere and have no volume. And then you come back off the, uh, off the highs with significant volume. And generally, the way to play these uh, highly uh, leveraged stocks to shorting, uh, like Tesla and maybe I, uh, and maybe like Boeing in the future, is just start off with a third. And if you start seeing profits, add another third. And if you still see profits, add another third. Generally, the best way to do it. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. We have some more emails. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, we were talking about Gartley patterns. As I said on Friday uh, with uh, Larry Pesavento, these things are just literally everywhere. And I mean, these are not kind of like sort of good looking um, patterns. I mean, these things are like the best patterns uh, that you could get. Normally, you get a couple of, of equities that are making this pattern a day. Uh, there may be 30 or 40 of them right now. Uh, that's telling you that you've got a very extended market. Most of these C to Ds have been on very light volume. Uh, this one's the BOTZ, which is the Global Robotics and uh, AI ETF. Um, could you get one more run back up to 2214? You could. You got to 2185. Kind of looks like that's rolled over. We'll look at some more of these uh, Gartley patterns before, but... You know, the very, very light volume from the C to D, if they had them, then I suspect you've probably seen a high for a while. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back uh, again. Not a lot of movement going on right now in the markets, but uh, still off six points on the S&P. Cash haven't been able to drive it uh, across the goal line. Uh, but again, kind of light volume day. Um, you've got uh, the bond market closed today. The TLT does trade, though, and it's trading, eh, I'm going to call it flat up one-tenth of a percent. Uh, tomorrow will be very interesting to see whether or not everybody gets right back to uh, selling the uh, bond market. Uh, question about uh, uh, GLD and uh, what's going on in that. And, you know, you're actually not at a bad place. I, I brought this up on Friday about uh, <clears throat> what you're at. But, I mean, if you just looked at this, took the name off the top of the chart, which is not a bad thing to do. Uh, you would find that you gapped up on about 17.5 million shares back on the 5th of August, tested it with 15.5 million shares, tested it again with 15 uh, million shares, and you're just kind of at this level of support. Uh, if you're actually looking for chart patterns that are interesting, and that is, to me, New Gold, uh, which has a fairly nice uh, Gartley pattern uh, with light volume from the C to D, uh, you may get a little bit more down here. The uh, bullish Gart, or the yeah, bullish Gartley pattern says a dollar sit. Well, oh, excuse me. Um, target is 81 cents. Got down to 84 cents yesterday. So you may have a little bit more to go, but actually not a bad looking chart. You probably find some more out here. Um, I don't know if gold's going higher. Uh, all you know really is you think maybe something's going higher. But at this point, not a bad-looking pattern. Uh, you know that you don't really want to go much or uh, go anything past a uh, 0.9 uh, retracement. So then you got about a, about a dime worth of risk. Uh, these are kind of uh, patterns out here that make me think uh, that if you wanted to have a uh, a virtual uh, non-expiring call on gold uh, that. This is actually not a bad-looking pattern to say, hey, I'm going to put in a couple hundred bucks. Uh, and, you know, if it does well, maybe I'll add another couple hundred bucks and build some small positions out of these that will have you uh, with longer positions if gold turns around. And, again, uh, not going to be a big deal if you lose a couple hundred bucks. But uh, new gold, not a bad-looking pattern. Maybe just a, a couple more cents out here, maybe tomorrow or the next day, and keep an eye on it. Now, let's look at some more of these Gartley patterns, because there just are so many right now. Uh, to, 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 
Let's do this. Um, again, they're not just in individual equities, but there are some out here. Uh, the uh, John Hancock uh, Opportunities Fund, BTO, uh, certainly has a nice one that's right up against what should be massive resistance uh, to go any farther in this uh, bearish butterfly. Um, and you were 34.77 for the target, you got to 35.24, kind of hanging up today, but you don't have a whole lot of volume. Uh, so an interesting one to take a, a look at. Um, again, all of, whether or not they're butterflies or not, uh, there are a great deal of different butterflies, uh, certainly in Asia. This one's kind of lightly traded, uh, but certainly the patterns are there in both lightly traded and heavily traded ETFs uh, of uh, China. CHII is another one. Uh, you got up to a 0.83 retracement on it and popped down today. Uh, DFE, which is the uh, small cap dividend fund for Europe, uh, also making a huge extension on lighter volume from the C to D. Uh, this one was uh, taking a D target of $60.43. You got to $60.49 today. And again, very light volume. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, these things start pulling back and you start seeing these things gap down, uh, which is uh, what a lot of these have done. Um, kind of good indications that this is where uh, the uh, crack will probably start to happen in a great deal of these. You want to keep an eye on uh, this. This one's DIM, which is the mid-cap dividend fund. Um, a little stronger on the C to D than a lot of them. Uh, DZK, uh, which is the developed markets bull ETF. Uh, same kind of pattern. This one did uh, one2 uh, retracement up to $70.07 with the target of 71.22. So there may be just a little bit more to the upside to that one. But there's so many of these things that have kind of given up at these levels. They're not all going to hit perfectly. Uh, the uh, dividend dogs, ETF E dog, uh, again, in uh, the dividends, I've started roll over. I've saw s several of these. Funds uh, that even though the Dow hasn't really moved significantly lower, uh, certainly the the uh, dividends have started to already roll over. Uh, e D O G is the symbol on this one. Uh, you've got uh, two gap downs from this uh, point and uh, 88 by uh, basically 88 percent retracement uh, in this Gartley pattern. In fact, if you do have Tom's book, if you don't have Tom's book, get it. Uh, but if you're looking for a good description of Gartley patterns, there's never a better time to go through the ones that I'm going to show you uh, today to go back and look at them. Um, this one's a little less. Uh, didn't quite get over uh, the previous high. This is the uh, European Financials ETF, EUFN. Uh, you would have liked it to get it a little bit higher, but it just kind of gave it up on no volume. EW. Y, uh, which is the uh, iShares South Korea fund, EWY. Same kind of thing as a lot of those over in Asia, which is you got back up uh, fairly close and rolled over the last couple of days with some decent gap downs. So tomorrow, a lot of these things are one you want to see uh, if we get a little bit more of continuation or if these things just are really starting to roll in advance of the rest of the market. The uh, first German, uh, Germany uh, Alpha Dex Index Fund, FGM, did a 1.23 retracement of the X to A. Uh, you wanted a target of 43.49, got to 43.29. A little bit of a gap up, but this one's not a huge trader. Uh, you want to see the trend, but it looks to me like it wants to pop down to about 42 and a half. You gap down tomorrow on that. I think that's going to tell you a great deal about what the rest of the world's doing. FINU, which is the ultra pro financial select sector, also doing a 1.39% retracement. Uh, the target for a bearish butterfly was 101.74. You got to 104. 
89. You're back down today at 102.34. Close back below 101.74. Give you a pretty good indication that that run from the October 3rd low is over. We'll be back to wrap up the show. One more second, uh, segment left. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, marks can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. FDNE, which is the uh, Emerging Markets Large Company Index, uh, gave a pretty good signal. It's below its X point, which is a pretty good indication this thing has failed. Um, energy wasn't that bad in the C to the D, uh, but you have two gap down, uh, two gaps lower uh, on this already. You're probably looking for a third gap lower uh, in the next couple of days. You get two. About 80% of the time, you're going to get three. Uh, Asia Pacific X Japan, uh, FPA, uh, also had a, a fairly decent Gartley pattern. Uh, the D target was 28.91. You got to 28.96 and a huge gap down today. Um, so it doesn't really matter what these are in, mostly in like I said, the third world, uh, some of the other big runs uh, in the market, you've got some fairly decent uh, 
moves higher. Uh, information Technology ETF, the FTEC, has gotten to 1.39. Uh, I got a little push more up here today on very light volume. Whole market's only doing about 3.6 billion shares. So tomorrow uh, is going to be very important uh, whether or not we've started kind of a new trend over the last couple of days with all these uh, ETFs gapping lower. Uh, the iShares China large cap ETF, FXI, same kind of pattern, got up to 88% retracement. Uh, your target was 4266, you got to 4327. Uh, two gap down, looking for a third, it would take you back down to about 41 on the FXI. Uh, what else do we have here? We got eh, not enough time. Let's check back in. Just take a quick look. Yeah, volume 3.6 billion shares, so pretty light. Uh, what do we have? Uh, S&P still not able to push into the positive, uh, down six and a half. Uh, Nasdaq still off 11 and a half. Russell still the weak sister off three tenths of a percent. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.